Hello, I'm Jürgen Bellmann from Sophistic. In this video I want to show you how to study a T-beam slab in a nonlinear analysis. There are different possibilities to model a T-beam in a slab. The first is the normal way we model the slab centric and insert an additional beam section inside the nodal line. This is mainly used for big systems, but we see we have the concrete double, a concrete in the beam section and a concrete in the quad at the same position. The other possibility is to model a real system where the concrete is only inserted once, either with eccentric quad elements or with a section only with the web below the slab. There is also a video on YouTube showing the normal sophistic T-beam philosophy. First to remember the normal way we insert a beam inside the slab. This double stiffness is subtracted. A beam is inserted that has only a reduced stiffness. And at the end the low moment of this equivalent beam is added with the part of the slab and we get the complete bending moment in the beam. The next possibility is a real system and I use it as a reference solution because it represents the reality best. We have only one concrete here and one concrete here. The elements are eccentric below the nodal plane and the concrete compression appears in the thin slab and in the thick quad element like this and also the reinforcement is only activated once in the thick element here. Strains and stresses are like in reality. There is also a YouTube video showing the basics of this nonlinear shell analysis. In this video we now want to compare the results of the real system with possibilities on this T-beam slab system in a nonlinear analysis. If we make a nonlinear analysis, usually it is best to define the reinforcement as a given reinforcement. This is shown in BMS 6 design dot dot, either with secondary groups or with a new selection box in the para input of BMS. We now open WinGraph and can check this minimum reinforcement and have a look at other results, maybe the nodal displacement in set direction in the linear case, shown as ISO lines, that is 5 mm, or in the nonlinear, that is 22 mm. We can also have a look at the nonlinear results in quad elements, nonlinear concrete reinforcement, bottom crack width, and we see here the direction of the crack. We see 0.28 mm crack width and this is the plot of the cracks on the bottom of our slab. So this is our reference solution with the real system. But now we want to study if it is also possible to get similar results with this T-beam philosophy. The first possibility is to reduce the stiffness of the beams with a control parameter in ASE STEE 0.6. That means all inserted beams get only 60% stiffness. Or we could use AQB to calculate individual reduced beam stiffness. We start first ASE with the T-beam philosophy in a nonlinear way, first using 60% stiffness. Then we can take this load case into AQB and calculate the nonlinear stiffness 
with SL serviceability work loss. And this stiffness we can now use in following Arzeron with the command sfix LC103 take the nonlinear stiffness of AQB for a next analysis nonlinear using the nonlinear beam stiffness. Please notice that in the Arzeron we do not have an NSTRS1 input. So in this Arzeron and in this Arzeron the stiffness is not updated automatically for the beams but here is taken as a fixed stiffness from the AQB run. As we inserted some new features please take into account that this is only possible with Service Pack 5 from June 22. Now let's have a look at some results. We see here the results of AQB, the nonlinear stiffness of the beam. And we see that in the beginning of the beam also the stiffness is reduced highly. Because if we do not make any further input, the concrete will have no tensile strength in our program AQB. In reality, here in the beginning, the section will not crack because the stress in the beam is below the tensile strength. And so here below, I inserted a calculation where I took into account the tensile strength of the concrete in the AQB reduction run. So how can we do this? For this we must make a new aqua restart where we define the tensile strength of the concrete here with FCTK but reduced by a little value because we also take into account the tension stiffening effect and to not double this effect we can reduce it a little bit. In the section for the steel material, we can insert here the reinforcement ratio mu t to activate the tension stiffening effect in the section. Now we make the same analysis. We first can copy with CSM a load case into another load case to make a new reduction run with this copied load case 193. This is only to not delete your old load case 103. And this reduction of the beam element that now includes the FCTK and the tension stiffening is inserted in a new load case 105. We call SFIX and FCTK and tension stiffening. The quads run with a normal nonlinear feature with NMAT yes. We can now compare the normal nonlinear beam stiffness as shown here with the result of load case 105 with the concrete strength and tension stiffening. And we see in the section stresses here on top we have no concrete tension. Here we have a little bit of concrete tension in the pure concrete and also the stress in the reinforcement is a little bit higher due to the tension stiffening effect. Now let's compare all results. On the left we see our reference solution with the eccentric quad elements. On the right the T-beam philosophy analysis with the reduced beam stiffness. In the deformation we see 22 mm for the reference system and here 26.9 mm for the T-beam philosophy analysis without tensile strength and 24 mm with the tensile strength and tension stiffening effect. We see the deformations are quite good and also the stresses in the beam and the stresses in the slab can be compared quite good. But remember this technique of a nonlinear stiffness beam inside a nonlinear slab is just only a trick that is not 100% perfect. 
You can find these examples in the ase.dat folder nonlinear beam. So thanks for your attention and goodbye.